A big theme uh, in this class will be taking a, a natural language description, so something in, you know, in words, uh, in, in English, for example, and turning it into the language of mathematics, right, where you can ask precise questions, uh, calculate uh, very specific uh, quantities, and, and uh, that's an example that I want to start out with. Um, so that's going to be uh, the specific example I'm thinking of is on the, on the board behind me. Uh, this is called the Ehrenfest model uh, due to Paul and Tatiana Ehrenfest. And in fact, it appears in your book. I'm going to pull up the, uh, the page here. So I, I don't quite remember what page this is, but this is chapter four on, uh, on Markov chains. And I encourage you to, to read over example 4.35 which I think they call uh, a random walk on a network. Uh, it is also a birth and death chain. Uh, and, and some of these things may, may be familiar, familiar to you depending on the, on the content that you had in, in 160A. But you know, just reading this, it's an Earn model uh, proposed by physicists P and T. So P and T stands for Paul and Tatiana. And uh, she in fact was a mathematician, uh, as I recall, and uh, to describe the movement of molecules, right? So. Uh, this example does come out of physics and you know it has a fairly uh, rich history and um, a lot of debates around it this is obviously not a physics class so we're not going to hit all of the uh, all the all these fine points but you know for those who are interested the, the idea is that uh, you know during the 19th century um, uh, thermodynamics was a very uh, hotly debated topic and um, you know, even in popular culture, I'm sure you guys would have heard of the uh, the second law of thermodynamics, which says that the entropy of a closed system is increasing. You know, whatever whatever that means. But the point is, that there's this concept of entropy in throughout the physics literature, and supposedly it's I increasing until you know the state of ultimate disorder. We'll uh, chat a little bit about you know some of these concepts, but um, the idea was. Um, you know, kind of the, the thought that was being entertained by physicists at the time is whether that's, act, that's actually true, right? Whether there, you could construct a counterexample and come up with a closed system in which the entropy would decrease, right? Even for a little bit. And this is uh, the first of such examples, right? So, you know, um, sought for a long time. And finally, it was um, uh, discovered or, well, not discovered, but proposed by, by Paul and Tatiana. I'm sure she helped with the mathematics and, and he sort of, was probably leading the, the physics um, um, aspects of this but let me just give you a description of um, of what's involved here so you have uh, what is essentially uh, um, two chambers right they, they're referred to as urns um, and, and that maybe is a terminology that came uh, later but essentially we're thinking of uh, you know kind of like in a chemistry class you would have uh, two containers right two chambers and uh, there is a separator right in the middle, uh, but in the middle of the separator, there is, let me see if I can get the finger on it without standing up, there we go. There's uh, an opening, right? So this opening allows for uh, particles that are in this chamber to pass from one to the other, right? And the particles are the dots, right? So you have these dots, they, these are particles of gas or liquid matter, whatever, I mean, they, they, the I guess in the original conception of this, this would be either a liquid or, or a gas. So let's think of like a you know a helium right gas contained in this chamber with a separator and, and this slot um, uh, to allow some of the gas molecules to pass through. Obviously, there would be a, a many many molecules uh, in a real system. I drew how many one I guess there are f uh, five on the on the left. So there are seven total um, total particles in the in these two chambers. And again, they're called urns. And from now on, I'm gonna call the the one on the left the left urn, and the one on the on the right uh, uh, the right urn. So, um, and that kind of I guess uh, finishes up this this first bullet point, which is just a description of of the physical system. And then, you know, at this point, we're ready to discuss sort of um, you know what happens, right? What dynamics, what behavior does it have? And, you know, there's in physics there are a lot of systems that are deterministic, right, where you would actually put deterministic equations that describe the motion of each one of these particles. <clears throat> but uh, in the tradition of statistical mechanics, which was a, a very uh, hot topic towards the end of the um, uh, the uh, 19th century, you have um, kind of probabilistic behavior assigned uh, to these systems, and and this turns out to be a very useful way of uh, generating uh, models for for you know, to represent reality, right, basically. 
So let me read you a very quick uh, word description of, of how this operates. Right? So I'm going to say pick a particle uniformly at random and move it to the other urn and then repeat. Right. So it's a very simple, uh, simple recipe. Um, just uh, in case, you know, kind of there's a little bit of maybe uh, technical uh, uh, verbiage here uni uniformly at random right what does that mean so that means that when i pick one of these seven particles they're all equally likely to be selected right so if there are seven of them the probability that i pick this particle right here is one over seven and that goes for all of the all of them right there none of the particles is special they're all as far as i'm concerned exactly the same and if there are seven of them that each one of them has a chance of uh, one over seven to be selected to be moved to the other urn and if there are n of them of course which you know n would be right in a real physical system this is like um, avogadro's number right so it's like 10 to the 23rd right so i can't draw that right but i can draw seven particles so it would be uh, one over n right and so you know just to very quickly make sure that you you see what's, what's happening here right i would select one of these at random so i just did in my mind right i selected this one and then i i moved it over here right and then i would select another one so you know i just picked one at random this one and i moved it here okay so you know that's the the description of a system and we really haven't done much mathematics but we kind of see what, what's going on and um, I have this little clip for you guys uh, this is from uh, the show um, Big Bang Theory I actually haven't watched it at all but kind of came up um, so you can watch it it'll be posted on the gotcha space but uh, the idea here is that uh, one of the characters I guess his name is Sheldon who's a theoretical physicist and he's explaining how uh, the air and first model explains, you know, how ink and uh, how ink, I guess, dissolves in water. I'll skip ahead a, a little bit in the clip and, you know, I encourage you to, to watch it and to think through it. it. It has some nice comments on Markov chains and, and goes through all the probabilities, but I'll pause the clip here. The idea is that, you know, you have, again, these two chambers, right, right, like in the video. And on the left side would be ink and on the right side would be just water. So, you know, here... Now, behind the clip right what I drew was was you know maybe uh, all the particles were the same this is a bit more advanced where the left uh, chamber contains you know particles of ink and the right one contains you know just h2o molecules but the dynamics right would be the same you pick at random and you move it over and so you know later in the video there's a little bit of a simulation let me skip ahead and you can kind of uh, cover it uh, yourself so let's see so there's the simulation where these particles are moving right and then with some probability one of them sneaks over so like at this moment in the clip you already see that two red particles are you know in the ink i guess and one ink particle is on on this other side right and so on right and so this is what's called the process of diffusion right which shows you know, which is a i guess a mathematical representation of a possible reality of how two substances two gases or two liquids could mix right and that, that's what happens in the system right and you can see i've played it sort of all the way through and you have kind of a rough distribution of ink and and water and now it's just kind of a dissolved ink substance and there's some more fun things i think in this clip where you know the question is can the system reverse back right backwards right that's exactly what's happening right now let me pause it like what's the probability that once this ink mixes with water what's the probability that it all comes apart and reverses back into water in the in in the left chamber or right whatever and in and in, um, ink in the right right and that, that's a big you know kind of concern in in physical systems and does relate to entropy right entropy uh, that will you know we'll revisit the con these concepts again but the idea is that high entropy is a state of disorder where everything is mixed and a low entropy is a state of extreme order where everything is like tidy and organized so you have ink on the left water on the right right and the question is is it possible for you know this ink to dissolve in water and then all of a sudden to undissolve and separate itself right and we certainly don't want that uh, in the world that we we live in right because that would essentially mean that we would all disintegrate right and, and into this these uh, i don't know what right so uh, uh let me hide the, the the video and continue okay so, you know, we're about uh, at that time where, you know, we understand the, the, all right, the natural phenomena that, we, that we're looking at. 
and we're going to start turning it into the language of mathematics and the first kind of part of this is to, to build up a little bit of, of an intuition and compute some probabilities so a question I have I guess I came up with a question one but there is no question two so it's just a question <clears throat> uh, what is the probability the next pick comes from the left urn right so uh, hopefully you know you can pause the video and, and think about this here right but uh, you know remember each particle is selected uniformly at random and what's being asked here is what is the probability that the next time I move over there and erase one of these particles to move it to the other urn what's the probability I move it from the left uh, to the right Right. Once I pick it from the left, it has to be moved to the right. If I pick it from the right, it has to be moved to the left. Right. And so, you know, hopefully you can answer this question. That should be a, should be a, a pretty easy one, right? An easy warm-up problem. Right. There are right now five particles on the left and two on the right, and there are seven total. So five over seven would be my answer. Right. With probability five over seven, I pick a particle on the left. And I move it over to the right. right. And now this answer all of a sudden became not correct because now there are four on the left and three on the right. So now it would be four over seven, right? Okay, let's let's end this video on or end this segment on the on the right answer and we'll pick up uh, pick up on the next segment. <clears throat>